NZXT is dropping a mini version of their original capsule mic, aptly called the Capsule Mini. Let's find out if they made any improvements, see if this is any better or any worse. My name is Chris and I'll be your stream technician. Welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Chris and this is Coalition Gaming, where I like to share my knowledge of PC building, repairing, and streaming with you all. If you're into that sort of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. Here we are at the desktop and I'm just holding the microphone with the stand and everything. You can just see how small it is compared to my Ever Media microphone that I that I use right here. And just turning it away, you can hear a little bit of the, the noise rejection that's happening. Um, speaking of which, let's just go ahead and keep rotating it. This is how I sound from behind the microphone and as I keep spinning it around I'm still talking I'm still talking and now it's back in front of me let's see how the how that's how it's handling a little bit of the um, handling noise I guess you could say but for the moment let's go ahead and move this guy out of the way we'll get this guy on the arm and see how it sounds this way but right now this is the capsule mini now not everybody is going to be using this microphone with an arm so with the stand right here all compact in the middle of the desk I'm going to go ahead and type and you guys can hear how it's picking up noise from my keyboard from behind it. So now I'm just typing and I'm typing and I'm talking and you get an idea of the noise rejection that you'd get with this thing on your desk with you talking down towards it and your keyboard behind it. And now you can hear the microphone as it is mounted on the arm. In this case, this is the NZXT Boom Arm Mini. So a mini arm to go with the mini microphone. And I've adjusted the gain on it. I've noticed that it's very sensitive. I have it at 50% volume right now. And uh, it's I see an OBS. I can still get it to hit the red which is actually a really good thing because if it's a little overly sensitive at higher volumes, you can crank the gain way back and then you're also going to be less likely to pick up random background noise. Like I can hear the computer that at my test bench over there buzzing a little, away a little bit and uh, I've had microphones pick up some of that noise. But this one, well, if you have any ambient noise like that, being able to turn the gain down so it doesn't pick up so much noise everywhere else is going to be helpful this is a condenser microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern so it's supposed to pick up less behind it like again with the keyboard clickety clacketing back here but you know away from the keyboard and off the desk this is going to be better than the test from earlier and uh but uh being cardioid as well it's this is a cider juice microphone it wants to get its audio from this side of the microphone and that's really all that means listening back to some of the audio clips on this microphone it's actually a little impressive for a little guy like this it is very clear and it has a little bit of bass in the uh vocals and the eq on it seems like it's very neutral in this case actually i don't know if neutral is the right term i think it has a pretty good treble the mids are not too high to sound kind of radio voice-ish and it's got like i said a little bit of bass it's well balanced and well tuned right out of the box just like anything eq can be added to it to improve its audio but um and i'm hoping that's something that nzxt is going to be working on because with this microphone they have introduced controls via nzxt cam and so this is the cam software with the mic on it so you can see you have all sorts of other control options and stuff depending on what nzxt you gear you have in your system but down here under audio you automatically detects the mini mic and you, where it says default here you think you can do some eq profiles but nothing like that yet i think it's just going to be profiles for these three adjustability points and this is the microphone gain and volume control this is the same as the one that you would adjust in windows under levels on this recording device audio is what the dial on the front of the microphone adjusts and that's basically just volume for whatever audio you're hearing through it if you're using the zero latency monitoring jack as a sound card to listen to everything through here as well that's a possibility with this microphone too and then you have side tone and that will uh, lets you adjust the volume of what you hear if i wanted to hear myself right now which i just turned it to 100 now i can hear a little bit of myself through there as well as like the you know the audio i'm going to be getting through it if i'm playing anything via this one and uh but if i don't feel like hearing myself and just treating this like a regular old microphone i can turn side tone down or side tone all the way off and uh, now it's just normal regular old microphone i'm not monitoring myself but i'm using it as a sound card in this configuration so if you like the idea of this software 
um, it is my understanding that it's also going to be coming to the main NZXT capsule microphone. And so, because uh, currently that's like a plug and play special. You don't need any software or anything like that. You don't particularly need the software for this one either. You can do microphone and audio control th all through the knob or through Windows, but you can only adjust side tone using the cam software. So that may be a minus maybe in my book because I have to install software to make an adjustment on the microphone but I mean if you're not using side, side tone or you're not even plugging your headphones into it then I guess it's a moot point anyway speaking of the sensitivity of this microphone with the microphone at 60 percent turned up on here for my seated position let's see how it sounds if I move back a little bit uh, this is me a few feet back Took the headphones off now I'm a little further back and that's about as far back as I can go. And this is how it sounds from this far away. I still see it picking up pretty good. That just goes to show you how sensitive condenser mics really are. And it can be a benefit of them. Now, if there's anything that I want to see NZXT do with their software, it's at least add the EQ capability to the software. So we have more than just mic, audio, and side tone adjustment. Um, having stuff like EQ and then that apply through any software we're using the microphone, be that OBS or Discord or Zoom or anything, that would be very useful and a really good reason to get the software for this microphone or the main one. And who knows, maybe the software can evolve into something like Elgato's Wavelink software and then we'd get stuff for virtual inputs and submixes and all that. That might take a little bit longer though. A cool thing about the knob on this microphone is it does have tap to mute. So if I just press it, then I push it again and here we are right back to action. It's got a little LED on it too. If it's red, you know, you're muted. If it's white, you're live. Now, nothing is more frustrating than muting your microphone and spiking your audio because the mute it, function itself is loud for some reason. So let's push the button uh, on this a few times. I have seen it spike when I push it to mute, but to unmute, it seems fine. But let's see, let's see what you guys think. Now it's unmuted. Now it's unmuted. Let's see how this thing handles plosive tests. Plosive, plosive. Please bring pizza pronto. Podcastage is awesome. Here's me, and uh, this is the guy she told me not to worry about. I have the original NZXT capsule right here. Let's throw it on for a quick mic quality comparison test. And here we are testing out the original NZXT capsule. This is the bigger, more expensive version of it, all metal construction. This one, the, the mini is a bit more plasticky and lightweight. That could be a good thing though. The metal construction on this one though does make it feel like it's a bit higher quality. And uh, yeah, this is how this microphone sounds. It's uh, basically the same distance as the other one. I pushed it back a little bit. I do have to say though, that the knobs on this one don't feel as good as the knob on the mini. Now they're both infinite turning knobs, sure, but these ones on the original capsule are basically smooth scrolling all the way through. Whereas the mini has like uh, tactile steps as you turn the knob and I much prefer that it feels like you know how far you're turning it when it's like that even if it just spins and spins forever but uh the ones on the capsule feel a little looser and uh, as a result of that and so yes I'm glad that they've made that improvement with the mini anyways this is how this microphone has sound let's switch back to the mini and now we're back but I cannot compare just to NZXT's other microphone. This being a small, lightweight, I guess you could say even portable condenser microphone, puts it in the same field as microphones I've reviewed in the past that could be had for a really good price. And so, let me go grab it. I'm going to throw it on here right now. We'll switch over to it. It's going to be the Toner TC777. Let's throw it on. And so here we have it. This is the Toner TC77 condenser microphone. It's a budget one, like around 30 or 40 bucks, but it doesn't have a detachable USB cable like the capsule does, or the capsule mini in this case. It doesn't have a monitoring jack or an ability to use your headphones through it at all. But, um, and yeah, so there are features that it doesn't have that the Capsule Mini does have, but this does come with a pop filter and a shock mount with its stand. So 
those are some benefits that may be more important to the people looking for a microphone. Depends on what you're looking for. But it's equally as compact, lightweight, portable, and, uh, and everything. And from my recollection, it was a pretty decent sounding microphone for the money, too. However, I'm finding out here very quickly that the Capsule Mini actually punches well above its weight class. And in the comparison so far, I, my vote is still on it. I'm going to listen back to this clip and see where I rank them. I'll be right back. So I've compared this microphone, the OG capsule, and the budget Toner TC777. And in my ranking of these microphones is that exact order. This punches above its weight class for, well, I guess at the price that it's supposed to cost, which is about $69.99, nice, is, uh, it's right in there with microphones in its price class. But for what it looks like, like small, plasticky, lightweight microphone that kind of looks like it would fit more in the budget sector, if you're looking at it that way, it punches above its weight class. If you're at looking at it in its price class, it's right where it belongs. And uh, it does sound better than the OG capsule microphone, at least to my ears. It sounds just like it's more tuned. And then when you're comparing both of those to the TC777, that one comes in last. It's it's nice and clear and all and everything, but those one, the, the capsules, they just have more depth than that toner microphone. And this one has the most depth of the three. It's just, it's a good sounding microphone. Now, just a quick word on the Boom Arm Mini that this microphone is attached to. The cable channels for you to put your cables in. Um, I really like the uh, little things that you snap in to hold the cables down. They're easy to put in. There's plenty of room in there. I got both of these had the headphone cable and the USB-C cable that this mic comes with routed in there. It's got good range of motion. It's a little clamping style like um, most mic arms would be. It uses the standard pinhole. Uh, so if you already happen to have uh, an arm and you wanted to swap that mount, that you would just be able to put it in there and you wouldn't have to necessarily undo that mounting and put this one in it just should go into any standard mic arm base being the boom arm mini also means that it's going to be a little shorter than your average mic arm which in some cases could be a good thing i have some that are too long and this one if you look at the setup that i have right now it's a perfect length like mini doesn't necessarily hold it back at all and it's going to be coming in at 69.99 so if this mic arm interests you i'll have links down in the description below as well as links to this microphone and the other ones as well whatever you like speaking of the og capsule microphone check out the review for it right here or somewhere around here and uh, with all that being said if you like this video you know what to do hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload also i stream to twitch every friday at 8 p.m pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition chris so feel free to stop by drop a follow and let's talk stream tech let's talk microphones yeah anything uh, pc building stuff you know you got it i'll answer any questions, just come on through. Anyways, my name is Chris, and I've been your stream technician. I'll see you guys in the next video or the next stream. Hmm? Come on through. All right. Bye.